In breaking news, the Congressional Budget Office releases its score on the Obamacare replacement bill. The highly anticipated report projecting that the House leadership's American Care Act would lower the federal deficit by a whopping $337 billion over the next 10 years, but it would also ultimately result in 24 million Americans losing their health insurance during that same time span. In fact, 14 million next year. Here to discuss Madison Jesse Otto, Adam Goodman, Ford O'Connell, and, and Gordon Gray. Uh, Ford, let me start with you. It feels like there's something for everyone in this thing, but is it enough to get it over the big hurdles that we've been talking about? Well, let me say this. Keeping Obamacare is not an option, and that's why the Republicans have to keep playing offense on this. Look, no matter how many people that were going to be uninsured and projected by the CBO, Democrats were going to cry foul. Charles, the real headline today with this story is that it's going to save $337 billion over 10 years because that means that it qualifies for reconciliation. What that means to the viewer at home is I only need a simple majority to get the Republican plan through, and that's the actual headline today. Well, of course, uh, Gordon, the headline tomorrow that everyone will read is 14 million people without health insurance next year, an additional 14 million, and by 2026, over 50 million Americans won't have health insurance. That will be the headline most people in America see tomorrow. Well, you know, I think it's really important to understand, you know, that this is a different approach to health care than what the Obama administration was doing, right? The Obama administration just said, well, it's going to be illegal not to have health coverage. The Republican plan wants to introduce choice into the matter, so if 50 people don't have health insurance but have the option to buy high quality insurance in an environment where premiums are going down, I'd say that's a better option. Of course, initially the premiums according to this scoring will go higher and then after 2020 begin to drop precipitously to the point where they're 10% below the current level. Madison, uh, some people are quibbling, if you dig into this, uh, f younger adults are getting a pretty good break, a 25% break on premiums. And the people in their 40s, a 10% break, but older Americans are going to pay 25% more. So I guess the, the, the idea is, is that going to be low enough for young people to get involved and get in there and buy this insurance? Because obviously that was one of the key parts that was missing out of Obamacare uh, that helped to spin out of con total control. Sure, what I think we have to keep in mind is the fact that we're eliminating the mandate. So people will no longer be forced to buy an insurance plan that they don't want or that really is useless to them. Premiums went up, but really the insurance went down. People weren't receiving the care that they deserved. And so young people now can have a choice to not only have options that are going to be more affordable to them, but also have the option to potentially not buy insurance and not have to pay a federal you know, tax on this. Adam, where do you think uh, the uh, more conservative Republicans Folks in the Freedom Caucus are going to be. Paul Ryan put out a piece. He says, listen, this lowers premiums by 10%. Ultimately, it does. Reduces the federal deficit by $337 billion over 10 years. It does. Cuts taxes by $880 billion. That seems to be in the sweet spot of the Freedom Caucus, but uh, I, I don't know. I, what do you think? When's the last time you heard from government they were going to reduce the deficit and actually did? I mean, this is actually going to reduce the deficit by $337 billion. And, of course, what is astounding about all this is we are now seeing a, a wave of collective amnesia that's coming into play, administered by Democrats and fostered by liberal media, that wants us to forget there was a train wreck right ahead of us that was a, a, like a ticking time bomb set to go off this year because of skyrocketing premiums and fundamentally our inability for many people to afford the deductibles to be able to even pay uh, for health care. So uh, I think there's going to be, with any kind of change, Charles, there's always a, a period of questioning and, and, uh, and naysaying. But what we needed to do was to avoid a disaster that was right in front of us. And I think that today's news, uh, even from the CBO, was a, a step in the right direction. Guys, just a few uh, moments ago, uh, the White House did come out on this. In fact, they came out swinging. I want you to take a listen to, to, to what they had to say about the CBO score. If uh, Obamacare, if the ACA went away, the fact of the matter is that there would be 20 million who would not have coverage. Uh, the CBO looked at a portion of our plan, but not the entire plan. We disagree strenuously uh, with, uh, with, with the report that was put out. I think if you look for uh, something the CBO may have gotten right in this report, it's that the premiums are actually going to come down in cost. The plan doesn't get rid of Medicaid expansion, right? right? So what the CBO has told you is if you're on Medicaid, that the day the mandate goes away, you're going to voluntarily get off Medicaid. Please tell me if anybody thinks that makes sense.
Of course, OMB Director Mulvaney saying, if you've got 10 million people in the marketplace now, and the CBO says it's the majority of folks on the marketplace who will quit because they're not being forced to do it anymore, how do you come up with the number of 14 million? Gordon, is this a return to fuzzy math? Uh, you know, I, I think there's good reason to, to question that. I think uh, CBO puts an, a pretty big uh, a weight on that individual mandate, and uh, um, I think there's uh, every reason to, to maybe take issue with that with that element of the analysis. Uh, take issue? <laughs> you can see where you can see where Price and Mulvaney were pretty upset about it uh, because it does. I, I was scratching my head, ironically, even before the press conference, wondering where the number comes from. That's a shocking number. It will be Madison. That will be the headline tomorrow. Forget about everything else. Forget about tax reduction, uh, deficit reduction. The main thing is going to be that the GOP wants 50 million Americans ultimately not to have health care insurance. Well, of course, this is going to be the headline. I wouldn't expect anything different. It just goes to the mainstream media's narrative of slamming anything that both President Trump as well as conservatives in Congress want to do. They're not putting the American people first. The media is putting themselves first and their own interests first. And the reality is that this is going to be better than what we had before. And again, this is just the first step in a three-step process to provide people with more affordable but, and better health care options. But, but Charles, you, you hit the point on the head. And basically, this is going to come down to a communications battle. You have to understand something about Amer the American public and health insurance. It's a little bit like plumbing. No one knows how it works. And most people actually know that they need it. So what the Republicans have to do is keep swinging forward, pushing through the Dem scare tactics and say, look, everybody who is currently covered will remain covered in those popular positions for people with, with, with current conditions. And those under 26 are going to remain on there. So the popular stuff is still there. And what we're doing is we're putting it choice ahead of, for the American people. Because you got to understand that one third of all counties in the United States only have one insurer. That's not choice. The status quo cannot hold. That's the point. Adam? There's still the issue of, of Medicaid expansion. A lot of Republican governors went for it. Now, as a result, you have these states uh, it, where Arkansas has 196,000, uh, Indiana 320,000, Ohio 454,000. These are all the folks that they put on this Medicaid expansion, uh, and there might still be some anxiety there. How do you see that playing out? Oh, there's going to be anxiety, all right. Uh, yeah, it was created by eight years of not fixing the problem and having to work through the, the failed promises of Obamacare. And I think uh, the president, is not only about health care, he said this on other issues, but particularly in health care, it's not going to be a smooth, easy transition. It can't be. We have to, we're going to go through some turbulence here right. because of what we've been living through. Uh, and, but on the other side, uh, I think we're going to find a rainbow of, uh, of opportunity to get our health care system straightened out. And I think one thing everyone agrees with is CBO has no idea how to, how to uh, model for the free market being involved in this, and I think that's a huge component. There's a Walmart of low health care insurance out there if we let it evolve. Guys, thank you all very much.